Good morning, church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for taking our place on the cross, wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to everlasting life. Grant us the strength, the power, to meet the days ahead in the comfort and the joyful expectation of eternal life. We pray in the name of the one who gave his life for us. We give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Let the church say amen and amen. Open your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Mark. At chapter number one. And I want to read to us from verses 23 through verse number 34. The Gospel of Mark, commencing in verse number 23. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Drop down to verse number 29. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand, lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even, when the sun did set, they brought him unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. Verse 34 reads, And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. Thank you. You may be seated. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. For this worship, I want to talk to us about Jesus has the power. I want to examine this magnificent power of the Lord while he is in the synagogue. He is preaching like one who has authority. They are amazed. They are astonished. And their mouths 
dropped open because they never encountered one like Jesus. Mind you, the people have endured long, boring soliloquies, speeches of one rabbi quoting another rabbi. But Jesus stands up in their midst and preaches with power and authority. Contextually, with character, and with content, so that they are amazed at his words. But to even further demonstrate who he is, three things happens in Mark chapter 1 to show us that Jesus has all the power. Walk with me around the text. In Mark chapter 1 verse 21, they went into Capernaum and while he is preaching, they are in the synagogue and the scripture says, while he was still in the synagogue, there came among them one possessed by the devil, a man with an unclean spirit, and the Bible calls it demon possession. And brothers and sisters, you hear me today. There are still people among us now who are possessed by the devil. Because if you are not a believer, you are subject to do anything. And the devil can so possess you that you do irrational things, not only to yourself, but to other people. Children who do not obey their parents, who do not say, yes, ma'am, no, sir, who cannot be controlled or contained, that's possession by the devil. Talk back to me if you can. The devil will take control where there is no Christ, where there is no Savior, where there is no Lord, Satan comes in to take control. And if you run him out without calling Christ in, he will come back with demons seven times stronger than the ones who left. When you don't know Jesus Christ, you are subject to be controlled by the devil. This unclean spirit had so possessed this man that he brought him to the church. That's a word for us this morning that even the unclean spirit in that man drove him to the church. He was out of his mind. He was controlled by the devil. But Jesus did not run him out from the church. He did not run him off. And Jesus this morning, Jesus let him in because he knew what the man's problems was. And Jesus this morning still has power over demons. That's my first point. Number one, Jesus has power over demons. Verses 23 through verse number 25. Look, look with me with, at what the scripture says. Here they are in this place. 
Here they are with these demons. And the demons know who Jesus is. They say in verse 24, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Or thou come to destroy us? Listen to this word of praise. I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. But Jesus says in verse 25, Hold your peace. I don't want praise from a devil. I wish I had a witness here. That word, hold your peace, means Jesus said, be muzzled. Don't praise me, Satan. I don't want praise. I don't want to get praise from the devil. I want to get praise from the one who the devil has possessed that I redeemed. I wish I had somebody help me here. You missed that. When the devil praised him, Jesus said to be muzzled. Hold your peace. Don't praise me. I don't want praise from the devil. I want praise from one who has been perfected from the devil. You still miss that. I don't want the devil to praise me. Hold your peace. Be muzzled. Don't you say another word. Because you are a demon. I want one who used to be possessed. I'm going to run that by you one more time. Jesus is not looking for praise from the devil. Jesus is looking for somebody who's been delivered to give him some praise. And there ought to be somebody in here right now who used to be possessed. I wish I had a witness here. You had a drinking demon. You had a lying demon. You had a demon that kept you out all night long. You had a demon that would not let you praise God. But since, since God has delivered you, he does not want praise from the devil, but from one who has been delivered. That's the power of Jesus over demons. Mm. The Lord don't want praise from a demon, he wants praise from somebody who's been delivered. And if you have been delivered, don't let anybody muzzled your praise. Doesn't even have to be on Sunday morning. You only have to be at church. If you've been delivered, if the answer comes, on a Wednesday, you ought to give God some praise. If God's bring you out on Saturday morning, they ought to know on your street that somebody in that house has been delivered. Number one, he has power over demons. But then the text says, number two, he has power over minor disruptions. Verses 29 to verse number 31. Because when Jesus got through preaching, he went to Simon Peter's house. And at Simon's house, his mother-in-law had a fever. A fever that kept her in bed. 
And when Jesus got to the house, and Simon's, Peter's mother-in-law had a fever, he just took her by the hand, and the fever left her. Now that seems minor and inconsequential, but that says to us that there is no disruption, no detail too small for Jesus. Getting rid of that demon from that man was a big thing. Relieving Peter's mother-in-law of a fever was a little thing. But God takes care of big things and little things. Sometimes we don't want to bring our little things, our little stuff to Jesus. But Jesus is concerned about your little problems. Now listen, if Jesus can run out a demon, he certainly can get rid of a fever. See quite, how quiet you got right there? That reminds me of uh, uh, Elijah in the Old Testament when he had challenged the prophets of Baal and the grove prophets to come in and meet him in a challenge at Mount Carmel and God answered by fire and Elijah stood up to 450 prophets and one woman named Jezebel made him run for his life. Stay with me now. I'm getting somewhere with this. If God can help you against 450, God surely can take care of one. See how quiet you got right there? There is no minor thing in your life that's too small for God, too small for Jesus to take care of. If he can take care of demons, half of a, of a man, surely he can relieve this woman of a fever. And the scripture says, after Jesus touched her and put his hands on her, she went in the kitchen and ministered unto them. Verse 31. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto them. Now that's a small thing. That is nothing. She just got in the kitchen, and got some food on the table, but that never would have happened had she not been relieved of that fever. So Jesus took care of that minor disruption so that she could be a blessing to him. And God would handle the minor disruptions in your life because there's nothing that concerns you that Jesus will overlook. He takes care of the smallest detail. But you don't have to take my word for that. Jesus says in Luke chapter 12 verse 7, and even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Now God take the time to number the hairs on your head. 
And if God takes care of so minute detail as hairs on your head, anything, big or small, that comes up in your life, God can handle. He has power over demons. Number two, he has power over minor disruptions. But finally, he has power over diseases. Verse 34. I want you to get this. Jesus healed many sick people. The scripture says he healed many sick, sick people. Verse 34. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devil to speak because they knew him. Many sick people, meaning he did not heal all the sick people because it is not always God's will to heal. You have to be awfully mature to accept that he does not choose always to move the affliction. I wish I, had, I wish I had somebody here to can help me testify that sometimes we misrepresent that passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. It says that by his stripes that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. And people use that to mean that he will heal you of every one of your sickness, every one of your problems, every one of your diseases, but it is not always God's will to heal. Sometimes sickness comes because of sin in your life. And then there are times when sickness comes when God wants to get glory over your situation. Let me see if I can help us with that right here. It is really a thorn in the flesh when you are sick and you have to take medication. I know people hate taking medication. People hate going to the drugstore. People hate standing in line. I hate the pharmacist telling me, give me your birth date. I hate going to the hospital. I hate my therapist. I hate my doctor. I hate, I don't like nothing about any sickness. But the Holy Ghost put in my spirit that every time I have to take medication, it reminds me of my dependence on God. Because I love the Lord. I am a Christian. I am a preacher. But if God has not chosen to remove the affliction, so be it. It is there to remind me that if I'm going to preach his word, I got to lean on him. But his grace is sufficient. Jesus says to Paul 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Another word, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And even though he does not move the affliction, he gives me power in the midst of it. Somebody ought to help me preach here. He may not get your daddy off his sick bed. He may not cure your mother of a disease. But if you got faith, God will help you go through the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, you don't have to move mountain. Just give me the strength. I wish I had some noise here. Somebody here is dealing with some problems in your family. Somebody is taking care of an aging parent. And that's hard and tedious because it's a difference between visiting a sick person and taking care of a sick person. And may, you may not have to do that. You may have to do that for a long time. But God will strengthen you. God will get under your burden with you that you will be carrying it. But the more you carry it, the stronger you become. You'll be able to praise God with louder hallelujahs. You'll be able to praise God with your hands held up higher because God has victory over diseases. Now hear me. If he does not deliver in this life, I'm trying to close this little sermon right here. If he does not choose to remove the affliction in this life, the Bible has a word for that. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know, I wish I had a witness here, that all things work together for good to them that loved God, to those who are decalled according to his purpose. You're going to help me close this, won't you? The Bible has another word for that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, for we know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, we have another building, a house not made with hands, but it's eternal in the heavens. I wish I had a Bible reader here. See, when I was a little boy growing up in Haiti, they used to sing, there's a leak in this old building and my soul has got to move. Before this time, another year, I may be dead and gone, but before I go, yeah, I'm going to let you know, I will be living in my brand new home. See, I'm not worried. I'm not worrying about my affliction on this side. 
Because Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back to receive me unto himself. John 14, 3. That where he is, I will be there also. So I got to suffer a little while. I wish I had somebody help me preach here. I got to cry a little while. I have to go through life for a little while. But I know that weeping may endure for a night. Psalm 35. But if I just keep the faith, if I just hold on to God's unchanging hands, I know joy will come in the morning. Have I got a witness here? For his anger endureth for a moment, and in his favor is life. And weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. If I just keep on trusting God, I can testify like the psalmist. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I wish I had somebody who's been through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. And my cup is running over. Surely, I wish I had some noise here. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Even though God does not deliver on this side, there's a bright side somewhere. Is there anybody here know that it will be over after a while? No more sickness in our families. No more dementia with our parents. No more problems with our children. No more suffering in our bodies. Every day will be Sunday and the Sabbath will have no end. Jesus is getting us ready 